Nick's friend, Peter, brought in this beautiful old frame that was around a mirror. And as you can see, it's in pretty rough shape. A lot of the molding is falling off. In a lot of the sections, the corners are coming apart. There are chips. So Nick is going to restore this, and we can't wait to show it to you. Hey everyone, Nick from Gallery 7, and you just saw pictures of a frame we're going to be uh, working on. I just want to make it clear that if this frame needed what I think of as an historically sensitive uh, restoration, it would have been sent to a gilder or something like that. But this frame had been painted with a brush in some areas. As best I can tell, it has been spray painted twice. So whatever's under all that paint is pretty much destroyed. So you're never going to bring this back to what it was initially. So I was happy to restore it and kind of make it look the way it did when it came in, only just fixed up. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, working on this frame for my buddy Peter. And if we look over here, you can see this detail is falling off. If we had what had fallen off, we could probably glue most of it back in, but it's gone. So we are making a mold and I've done 13 coats of this product called Mold Builder. You have to keep building it up layer by layer. I'm gonna put the final coat on. You have to put it on thin and build it up. That's why it takes so long. And it's been so humid, it's been taking at least 10 hours for each coat to dry. Normally you do this in a couple of days. So Peter has been very, very patient. Now, you guys will also be with me when the big moment comes and we peel the mold off. All right, talk to you later. We've shown a video of this before, but it's always a fun moment taking off the mold. I've got it started here. And this is when you kind of pray a little bit that it doesn't pull the frame apart. Of course, if it does, you glue off the part it pulled on or make use the mold to make a new one. And here you can begin to see there is the mold of that detail. And we will keep going. Now, I don't need this much. But when you make a mold like this, make a nice long piece in case something goes wrong with some of it. Almost there. Now, if we look at this closely, you can see on this border, it goes all the way around the frame, there's all these cracks in it. Now, these we're not going to repair. That's kind of part of the antique look. And I'm very happy because if you look at the mold, you can see, there we go, these little ridges right there, those are those cracks. So when we make the mold, it's going to match this. It's not going to look brand new and perfect. It's going to have the same type of imperfections the rest of it has. Man, I can't wait to finish this job. All right. What we're looking at here is the mold that you saw me peeling off uh, in the other video. This is for the frame that we are rebuilding. The mold is very rubbery, so it's up against a piece of poplar because I have to have a straight line all the way down here. It's been put down onto a board with ATG double-sided tape, and then the edges have been taped off. It's been sprayed with release agent, 
and later on today you're going to get to see me pour the epoxy into the mold all right talk to you later all right everyone how you doing we are now going to take our awesome part a and b epoxy like mixture mix it up and pour it into the mold for this frame it's a one to one ratio so one part of A and one part of B. Now I'm probably mixing up too much, but this stuff is not that expensive and you really hate it when you don't mix up enough and you're halfway done pouring, you don't have any left. Okay. And this will dry a solid white color and it will dry fairly quickly. Now, when you work with these A and B epoxy mixers, you have to mix it really, really well. If you don't, it's not gonna cure and set up. This is really exciting, I know. Look at, look at this awesome stirring action. Whoops, I think we're getting there. Oh, God, if I got that on Kelly's white pants, she's going to kill me. No, it's fine. Fine. Just got my hand. Not to worry. Okay. Now we're going to pour this into the mold. And you don't want to pour it too deep. I don't care if it spills out over the sides. That looks good to me. I think we're going to call that done. Hang on one second. I have to... Now, come over here, guys. This is the frame that we're rebuilding. Remember, the mold is, is to fill in these spaces. I may take some of these half ones out and just do a whole new strip here. I don't know yet. This frame has had a very interesting life, and I can't quite figure it out. First thing, this frame has been painted a couple of times. One, if we look at, if we look at this, which is a sort of deep mahogany, almost black color, at some point, someone had painted this because this was like a gold color. And now, if I look at this side of the frame, this may be hard to see in the video. This is kind of a coppery sort of color. And over here, it's kind of a goldish wood color. And on this side, it kind of follows that coppery color. This almost looks to me like a spray paint, like someone had spray painted this. This gold may have been, this dusty gold may have been the original color. But the feeling of the frame now, having been painted here and painted here, is, I think... Whoops, this reddish deep mahogany color. So once I get this all filled in, I'm gonna use a Bondo Auto Body Putty to fill all these things in. I think I'm gonna go with a deep, deep, all dark brown, little bit of red mahogany color all around here. I'm going to bring this back to that same dark mahogany which it was painted. And this gold is going to stay a very kind of quiet, dusty looking gold. I'm not going to brighten that up too much. Okay, we'll show you some more as I get back to work on this later. All right, I've poured the pieces into the mold. And I've cut where I feel it lines up fairly well. This may be hard to see in the video, but I mentioned this when I was pouring the mold. This here is too thick. It's sticking, sticking up above it. So now what I have to do is take the blade and just spend probably about a half hour doing this and making this a little bit thinner. I mean, we're not there yet, but make it thinner so it'll fit right in there. Also, you'll notice the mold came out a little wider this way than the piece. That's just how the mold ended up being made. This is going to be too hard to cut. This is overhanging a little bit out here. Once this is glued down, I'm going to sand this edge until it becomes flush with everything else. 
up here, I seem to be a little better. This part's a little thinner. This piece is gonna fit in quite nicely. And you also see the overhang here, which I'll sand down. And I think this is gonna come out great. All right, we'll show you more later. Okay, I'm back with uh, our frame restoration. Don't freak out when you see the color people, but this is, this is where the replacement pieces from the mold have been put in. And what's gonna happen here is, I'm gonna take the whole area and I'm gonna do it with this antique color gold rub and buff, which is what you see on here. That was a little test area. Once I get this all to the same color, then I come back and antique it so it's not this bright. But first I wanna get everything here completely even. Now, the hard part to get to on this frame is going to be, and I have Kelly move in again, is gonna be this area right here. And what we didn't talk about initially was this is what's called a stacked frame. It's actually three frames put together. And as you just saw, this piece here comes out. And now I think I've decided I wanna take this section out. And if I turn it over, so this is the inner frame. This is the part that had the repair. And a couple of important things about taking this out. One, I have to make a registration mark. I wanna put it back in exactly the way it came out. And the other, the reason we're doing that is, if you take a look, you can see, you may not see it in the video, but right here is a nail. This has been nailed on. And what I need to do is remove these nails. And when I do that, I want to re-nail it right in the exact same nail hole it had before because I don't want to crack the wood. This has been fine. So that's going to be the next step on this. Once this is out, it'll be much easier to work on this whole thing as uh, a separate thing. Get this little area in here colored correctly and then we'll put the whole frame back together. All right, I know it's a long video. I hope it's interesting, you guys, and uh, we'll show you more later. This frame is filled with surprises, and a lot of it is really just falling apart. We've got this here, and this here, and I believe there's another area like this, which right now I can't find, but I will. You know, if it's really bad, one could remove all of this, but boy, that opens up a whole can of worms. So the thing to do is, as it falls off and as I tap it and see what's loose and what isn't loose, we take these and we glue them back in. And, you know, I think I can be fairly sure whatever doesn't fall off as I kind of tap it and tweak it um, would be pretty stable. Okay, we're carrying on with our frame restoration. And the last shot we showed you was, it was a stacked frame with three frames. This is the innermost frame, which I have done nothing to yet. And uh, this should be pretty simple. It just needs to have some color put on it. It does not need any serious repairs. So now I'm gonna bring over. This was the major repair part right here. This is the one that was missing a lot of this uh, molding around here. And frankly, it's almost impossible to find the repair. The reason you can see it now is I did put some gold wax on this whole thing. On the repair, the gold wax, I got the gold wax in everywhere. And on the non-repaired part, you still see the gray under there. So, the next step is going to be get all of this to look just like this, get everything completely even. And then, as I said earlier, I'm gonna come back and antique it. Now, we're gonna take a look at the outer frame. The outer frame had a lot of chips in corners like here 
and chips over here. Some pieces missing in these areas. There was a big chunk. Where was it? Yeah, it's right here. There was a big chunk out of here, which I'm still working on. So what I did was this part, which is going to be painted that sort of deep, almost dark brown maroonish color, <clears throat> which is what this is here. And as I said, this had all been spray painted at some point. So what I did was I sprayed it with a lacquer, sprayed it with the lacquer, gave it a sanding with 220 grit to seal everything. Then, well, before I sprayed it with the lacquer, I had spackled all and used auto body putty to fill in all these dents here. So spackle, auto body putty, lacquer the whole thing, sanding with 220 grit, and then I come back and I'm using black paint because black paint shows every defect really well. So when I look at this corner, I can say, yeah, it looks okay, but I've got a little more work to do here. And then once I get this all smoothed out, and this needs more work uh, right in here too, once I get that all smoothed out, uh, it'll be time to put the final color on. Okay, these corners had minor chipping, nothing worth making a mold out of. So what I do is I use a little bit of clay and I'm just going to put a few things in here that will help your eye carry that detail around the corner, just so it kind of blends in. So I'm not going to make you watch all of this, but this is sort of the idea. So where we left off was on the inner frame, which had the repair done. Uh, and I, honestly, I really can't tell which of these was the repair. So to get back to that antique look, I went gold on the whole thing. And then this was the way it's going to look when it's all finished. Um, which is you put a little uh, paint on it of the right color. Then you wipe it off. And it's a beautiful antique look. Of course, this is all going to be treated as well. So this, I understand pretty well. This is going nicely. And I'm just going to put this aside. I think I've got the outer frame figured out as well. Now, the outer frame was darker. But I did the same thing on this that I did on uh, the inner frames, which was that I went gold on the whole thing. And then, you know, I put the paint on it and wiped it off. And we're getting that nice antique look. I, I think I want this a little bit darker. Because I think when it came in, it was all, almost felt black with little bits of gold. So the technique is pretty simple. I'm going to put the light on it now. The technique is pretty simple in that you... Use a big brush to get in everything. You put the paint in like that. And then you just take a cloth. And you sort of wipe off as much as you want. The nice thing about this is reversible. If I don't like it, I can go back to gold. I could start again. But I think this kind of may be the direction we're going. All right, we'll show you more as we get there. Okay, so this has now had a gold treatment and then it's been with a dark paint and you wipe the paint off and it leaves the gray dark paint in the low points, which is what you want and you want the gold on the high points. I felt the thing didn't quite have enough of a gold feeling. So I went over the whole top one more time with a gold impregnated wax, some, a product called Rub and Buff, which is great. But if we look right here, we don't want the gold in these low points right there. That's a little distracting. So I just take my brush with that very thin down paint and I come in and I just take some of that gold out of that area. Now I'm just gonna give it a little dab and that's it. So unfortunately, I can't do this globally, put on the paint, wipe it off. Now I have to go section by section and make sure I've taken care of all of these low points that should, should not be gold. 
Okay. Finally, all the components are done. The frame was completely disassembled. Each piece was worked on individually. And now it goes back together. Whoop. Like this. And like that. And we're gonna show it to you when it's all, we'll hold it up and show it to you when it's all screwed together. But what I wanted to show was, I did make a change in my approach here. So in one of the very early sections of this video, I talked about making a registration mark and using the same nail holes to re-nail this back together, which was how it was originally made. The problem is it's still very fragile and I don't want to bang it with a hammer. If you remember, a lot of the uh, details were falling off of this. A lot of them have been glued back on. So I'm going to be using offset clips and I painted them black and this will get screwed right here. And the smaller ones will go right here. And that is what is going to hold the whole frame together. So now I'm going to say this and I will be correct this time. We're going to show it to you when it's done. The frame is finally done. I'm really thrilled with how it came out. And if you remember, big chunks of this section of molding were missing. We made a mold and recreated it. The frame had such a story past various layers of spray paint and at one point I realized it was just easier to sort of refinish everything. So the whole frame has been completely refinished and I think our client is going to love it.